name is Dr. Mike Cooper, and this is another segment of Managing the Surgical Patient. And today we're going to be talking about special cases in refractive surgery. And we're here today with Dr. Eric Brooker. Eric, how are you today? Doing great, thank you. So let's get right into it as far as talking about the different inlays that are out there. Give me an overview. Tell me what's, what's, what's fresh. Well, it's really exciting time because we have a lot of new inlays coming to the market for presbyopia. And there's four companies that have uh, come to the marketplace at this time. We have uh, AccuFocus with their camera inlay, Revision Optics with the raindrop, Presbya with the FlexiView lens, and also Neoptics with the Ico lens. So we've got four different options that are making their way to the marketplace at this time. And so where do they actually stand? Where, where are they are in the phasing of, of the actual as far as instrumentation? Mm -hmm. Well, they're definitely in different phases. Um, AccuFocus is the furthest along. They've made it to the panel already, so they finished their phase three trials. They have patients out well over three years at this point. So that's going to be the first one into the marketplace if they, if they get the final approval. Uh, second to that is the raindrop by revision. They now entered their phase three trials. They have about 100 patients enrolled, and so they're, they're coming along. And FlexiView has actually got into their phase two at this point, so they're a little further down the line. All right, so very good. So let's get into as far as the mechanism and the actual results, the outcomes. Give me this for as the nuts and bolts. Absolutely. So the camera inlay made by AccuFocus works through a mechanism of pinhole optics, so small aperture to increase the depth of focus of patients. So it improves both the distance, intermediate, and near vision. And the results that I've seen so far have been around 20-20 distance, about 20-20 intermediate, and somewhere between 20-30 and 20-20 near. So, so pretty good. Um, when we look at another company, the Revision team, they have about 100 patients enrolled, as I mentioned in the trial. They work by reshaping the cornea and increasing negative spherical aberration. That's how I understand it. Um, their results also look good, 20-20 distance and 20-20 uh, near, promising. And then the final one is the FlexiView lens by Presbya. This particular lens is actually a bifocal lens, so similar to bifocal contact lens. So it has a center for distance and the periphery, periphery is um, utilized for an add between plus 150 to plus 250. The results are not as good for distance. I've seen their distances around 20, 30, 20, 40, but their nears tend to be around the 20, 25 range. So segueing from refractive inlay technology, let's talk about coronal cross-linking. Give me an overview of the key points. Absolutely. So um, in, I do a lot of the inlay work in Canada where corneal cross-linking is approved. And the doctors there have started to use it for several applications, uh, definitely for keratoconus and to help stabilize the cornea for ectasia or you know, post-refractive ectasias, things like that. Um, but also they're starting to use it more preventatively in cases mm -hmm. such as what we call, they call LASIK plus. And in this, they'll, they'll use the cross-linking on patients that have a higher risk of re regression, for instance, a high hyperop and then they'll do the LASIK treatment. They've had a lot of success with that, so I think it seems very promising uh, for the future into the U.S. So switching gears, we're going to talk about an interactive question now. Which procedure shows the most promise, epithelium on cross-linking or epithelial off? A, epi on, B, epi off, C, it depends on the patient's presentation and disease state, or D, there's not enough data to say. <laughs> 